Oh, Lord, where's my next client? Oh, Lord, I'm going to pay this bill. Oh, Lord, I'm going to make payroll. Oh, Lord, I'm going to get this website. I don't even know anything about website, but I got to turn it on. I'm losing customers. Would you pay $4.6 million to have lunch with a billionaire? Well, that's exactly what happened. An undisclosed person had paid Warren Buffett at a charity event $4.6 million, not for lunch, but to have lunch with him. So in this conversation, this video, I want to share with you a reaction to advice. Since we don't have $4.6 million, nor do we have an opportunity to sit down with billionaires right now, but we have the opportunity to watch their advice to small business owners in this episode of Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, here, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. Before I get started, I got my little friend hanging out with us today. So, uh, Samson, wanna say hi? Look, look, look at you, look at you, say hi. Say hi, look at you. <laughs> that being said, guys, we need a lot of distractions right now. Positive distractions, that is. This election of 2020 has not wrapped up yet. At the recording of this video, there's still slight, slight, small edge of Trump versus Biden in uh, Georgia and uh, I think uh, um, P uh, Pennsylvania. I think in Nevada, I think the votes is like between 20,000 and 60,000 votes. It's very close. We still have not found out the, who the president-elect is or who the continuing president is, but it's going down to the wire. But regardless, regardless, what goes on in the White House, the most important thing in my opinion, what goes on in your house. So let's have a positive distraction to taking this energy that we all have right now of anxiety, of stress, of the unknown, of the uncertainty, and channel into something that we can control, which is improving our money game. So therefore you can be a first generation cash flow millionaire, which is the purpose of my YouTube channel. So with that being said, my team said, Matt, why don't you take that energy we have, we all have right now and channel into something positive. And once you take a look at this video of billionaires giving advice at a conference, I think it was last year. And there's some names there that you all know if you're in the business world, if you don't know, you're getting into the business world that you should know. But some of their advice about being multi-multi-billionaires and getting to that level of running a small business, from going from employee to running a small business, to obviously, hopefully one day running a large company. So let's take a look in my reaction and probably some feedback on their advice to small business owners. Let's take a look. The best advice to a small business owner? Warren Buffett. <laughs> By the way, Warren Buffett, he's actually officially slid down the Forbes top richest uh, people in the world list. He was number three, formerly number three, is now four, number four in the Forbes um, f uh, 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 richest people in the world list. Uh, who took him over was a guy by the name, what, what's the guy's name? Bernard Arnault and family from France took him over on the richest people in the world list. He actually owns Moet, Louis Vuitton, some of the things that uh, you probably either drink or travel around in. But he took over Warren Buffett as, as, uh, number, at the number three spot. Warren Buffett slid down the list, worth only $65.5 billion. So let's take a look. Uh, is never stop thinking about how to delight your customer, not to satisfy your customer. I 100% agree with that advice, though. But uh, I remember when uh, Jeff Bezos was being interviewed, and he said, listen, we didn't care about who was our competitor in the marketplace uh, when he was building Amazon. He said, we just cared about having a great customer experience. And uh, obviously you've seen a story, he started selling books online on this thing called the internet. Nobody knew what the internet was, let alone selling books online. People actually buy books online, and actually they did. But he evolved, he kept creating, you know, bought businesses, swallowed them under, under Amazon to create a better experience, get a database and create an experience for the users and the customers. And next, you know, he created Amazon Prime, which is awesome. And so the, you, wouldn't say, you wouldn't say that you have a bad experience buying through Amazon. I think everybody buys stuff on Amazon. By the way, Walmart right now, if you guys didn't know this, Walmart right now is making a play for the market share online from Amazon. So watch a bunch of people right now starting their online stores, not through Amazon, but starting their online stores through Walmart. Walmart is making a serious push right now into the e-commerce space. When you wake up in the morning, start thinking about it. During the day, think about it. Yep. At night, think about it, yep. and then dream about it. And yep. No company has ever failed that, that had millions of delighted customers. In That's it. right, guys. The best form of advertising is happy people, happy customers. They'll tell everybody about you. It's not radio. It's not TV. It's not uh, a print. It's not newspapers. It's, it's actually word of mouth. And actually, social media allows that word of mouth to continue to grow and manifest. So I got to agree here with this advice from Mr. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha. 
for them and you get them one at a time. There's no substitute for hard work. Bloomberg. It starts out just you, and it'd be great if it grows into a wonderful, big, profitable company. But you're never going to be happier and more satisfied than you are in the first year or so of getting your business going. Because you do every single thing. You sweep up when everybody goes home. Yep. You're the first one in. Yep. Plug in the coffee pot. Yep. So when your people come in, they have hot coffee and can get straight to work. Yep. Um, you work through lunch. Set an example for them. But there's no substitute for hard work. People say luck, yes, but the harder you work, the lucky you get. Yeah, I, yeah, harder work, lucky you get. You know, I, as as a founder of my own company and being an entrepreneur for 21 years, uh, starting this uh, uh, company and here in Chicago, uh, being a chief distribution officer at PHP Agency now, uh, just starting this, my business from scratch. There's a lot of pride and joy about the original notes that you took. You know, Ali here was just asking me, hey, Matt, these are notes you took from Patrick and David a podcast on the presidential election night a couple nights ago. Do you want to throw it away? I said, no, keep those. Actually, I actually had these notes from the Patrick and David podcast. I said, keep those, Ali. I almost made the mistake of throwing it away, but I said, keep those because these notes, what we share in the podcast where Dennis Prager came on and, and uh, Senator Tom Culleton came on, these are that's history. I was, I was documenting history. Dennis Prager was talking about capitalism, socialism, why the government shouldn't be taking care of you notes from notes and notes with uh with, with dennis prager why because it's the way you value small business because it's your money that you put into your business and you tend to value the coffee you tend to value the lights the office the workspace not as much as an employee does but you as a founder you as an entrepreneur the business person at first two years is your founding and establishing your company you value that man it's the juice my advice to a, a small business owner or any entrepreneur carrie healy don't know much about her from babson college okay or would be not to be discouraged if the business you end up with is not the one you started out <laughs> uh, to, to pursue. Sure. Because so often you encounter difficulties, yeah. you encounter failures, yep. and the important piece is to learn from each of those very quickly and yep. to pivot and to move on to the idea that works. Yep, I got to agree with that because, listen, when I, uh, when I first started my business, I, uh, I transitioned out of the military. I was in the Marine Corps, and I transitioned to the insurance industry, and then I created my own independent practice, and uh, I spent $17,000 on, 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 what do you call those things, on uh, when, you know, your, let, your letterhead, letterhead, business cards. I spent all this money on a website, brochures, folders. Uh, this is evidence of it still. This is my original Matthew Sapala Inc. when I was creating my financial practice, insurance practice, and this is kind of like the back and forth of it. I put it on a binder just to remind myself of my first business that didn't really last for the long term, but I did this. I did the individual practice here for 12 years, um, 60 to 80 clients I'd bring on a year in my personal insurance practice before I decided to scale up to the uh, 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 national agency that we have today with 16,000 licensed agents coast to coast with my partners and 2,500 I personally mentor. But yes, there's many times you start a business. It may not be the right one. And I think many of you uh, that are thinking about this during the pandemic that are shut down because of the pandemic or shut down because you just can't get customers to come to your store, you might have started the wrong business or wrong business model and you got to adapt, you got to pivot, you got to innovate. Of course, you have to be close to your products, close to your customers. Blank fine. Uh, Chairman CEO Goldman Sachs. And think about them. That's the most heavy hitters here, man. Don't forget to think about your business, what your plans are, what you want to do next, how to take your business to the next level. Again, think about being in your business, but think about your business as well. Yeah. My yeah, I, I think uh, you're right. You can't just think about your individual in the business, not on the business, because many times you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. Uh, that's why my mentor, Patrick but David, now has a Wall Street Journal best-selling book called Your Next Five Moves. Uh, it's one thing to make sales. It's one thing to start your business. one thing to open up the doors and turn on the lights and get your first wave of customers, get your first clients, you get your confidence up. But what's after that? What's your next? What's your next? At every phase, you always have to think about, think about next. Because here's a challenge, though, as an entrepreneur. Here's a challenge of somebody who's aspiring to be a, uh, a millionaire. If you're a millionaire right now, to get to the next level is, in your world, sometimes and most likely in your world, you're the only person telling you what to do. Like when you're working for somebody, like when I was in the military, I always had somebody in charge tell me what I needed to do, what orders I needed to follow through with. As an entrepreneur, you don't have that luxury. You are the boss. You are the general. You also are the worker. So who do you hold yourself accountable to? I think this is uh, uh, valid advice about what your next moves are all the time. This is to Jack Dorsey. Really work hard to clarify what your purpose is. By the way, Jack Dorsey, man, he got lit up. He got lit up by uh, Senator Cruz. Uh, he was uh, he was grilling him. <laughs> 
You should have seen, uh, by the way, this picture right here. Let, let's insert another picture of what he looked like a couple weeks ago when he's getting grilled via Zoom by uh, Ted Cruz about why he's censoring tweets, why he's censoring the New York Post. Like the New York Post, which is a publication, they cannot tweet because he didn't like one of the tweets. Twitter didn't like one of the tweets he sent out, so he shut down the account. And it couldn't get a straight answer for Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, about why the New York Post, from here going forward, cannot retweet or tweet because they got their account disabled. But uh, Jack Dorsey, what you got to say? CEO and founder of Twitter. And uh, be able to articulate that, be able to communicate it uh, in a simple sentence. And the reason that's important is as you bring people into your company, um, I think the most important question you ask them is, why are you here? Or yeah, you want to join for the sure. Company. And if you hear that purpose back, if you hear that passion around that purpose, it makes everything a whole lot easier. Yep. Any skill can be learned and taught, uh, but passion cannot. Mm, that's, that, that's that's solid. You know, character and character and passion. That's something somebody has to have with your company. Whether you're recruiting them, hiring them, putting them on salary, independent contractor, they're your brand ambassador. You know, if you're building a business, you want to surround yourself with a team. That, can, that constantly has passion. And sometimes, you know, uh, uh, when you're paying people a salary or when, when they get to, a, you know, if you have your salespeople, they get to a financial level of success, there's a level of, level of moment, uh, uh, momentary pause there that you wonder whether, whether or not they, they're going to take it to the next level. Let me give you an example. Lots of times people say, man, when, when I make $400,000, when I make $500,000, man, I'm still going to work, I'm still going to crank it out. Then they make four or $500,000, they make $100,000, whatever their financial goal was, and then they make it, and then they stop. Why? Because their vision was so, was so stuck on a short-term vision, which is monetary, which is money. It wasn't connected to character. It wasn't connected to passion. It wasn't connected to something greater than themselves. And that's why they get stuck. This next guy, Mark Morial, president and CEO of the National Urban League. I was about to say, where is the, the diversity inside this, uh, inside this event? Well, here he is. Entrepreneur can be a roller coaster ride at times. Sure can. You will have great days. You will have not so great days. Yes, and you get closer to Jesus. <laughs> oh Lord, was my next client? Oh Lord, I'm gonna pay this bill. Oh Lord, I'm gonna make payroll. Oh Lord, I'm gonna get this website. I don't even know anything about website, but I gotta turn it on. I'm losing customers. You get very close to whatever faith that you believe in when you're an entrepreneur, for sure. You may even from time to time have an awful day. Yep. You've got to stay focused and stay level-headed and keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> for sure. Do well Michael Porter. Level, even Dang. It may not be written down on this the guy. Paper, need to have this guy's a beast. Clear strategy of why they. Of course, he say strategy because that's what he's known for. He's known as one of today's forethought, uh, um, most uh, forward-thinking strategists, competitive strategist, Michael Porter. Why they're adding value? Why they're producing something special that customers need that they're not getting now? So. I think if there's a clear sense of strategy and you can get all the people aligned around that, then yeah. you get a lot more power than if you're just scrambling and working harder and harder. Uh, yeah, that's 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 100. Yeah, this this guy, man, the work that he does, brilliant work, brilliant work that he does. You know, when you're thinking about all the manpower, the energy, the excitement. Um, uh, the eagerness that a lot of people have when starting a business or, you know, something new that you just began. You had the courage, you had the faith to start a new business, but it's just 100%, you know, just horsepower, but you have no torque and you have all this excitement, but actually no action. You have no strategy. You know, you might last for a while just on sales, but you've had no strategy to innovate. You have no strategy to, be competitive, to continue to be competitive. You have no strategy to innovate, to find out your, your next moves are to scale. Uh, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be lapped over many times and uh, you will stagnate. Without, without that clear direction. So that, that's my one piece of advice. Awesome. Man, all right, wonderful piece of work here. All right, so what you just heard there was a compilation of individuals, entrepreneurs, and influencers that went to this event, a combined total net worth of $144 billion, the advice that you heard there. So uh, as much as I am a wannabe billionaire, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm part of the Seven Figure Squad and, and tasting a little bit about this uh, uh, the success, but I have so much further to go, man. Listen, amongst all the cash flow millions out there, I feel like I'm the brokest one. I still gotta grow. I still gotta innovate. I still gotta to, to tap into my potential and discover the next best version of myself. So if you're watching this video and you got some advice, I wanna know what you're thinking. You, got, you heard from these 
key figures in American business today that it has some prominent value that they deliver to the marketplace. I mean, if you're looking at these entrepreneurs, the, the consistent thing with them is they've given back. They've created value into this world. They just went clocking in, clocking out. And if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, you want to think like one, you want to stretch like one, so therefore you become one. And eventually, listen, the first step to become a billionaire, you got to be a, you got a millionaire. There's many more steps in between. But if you're looking at this business advice and you're looking at this pandemic, you're looking at this, these elections and you're finding out what is the silver lining in all this, well, here's a silver lining. It is a great time to be an entrepreneur. It is a great time for you to say, I'm going to take control of my financial future. I'm not going to trust anybody else's hands. And I'm going to find that version of me that says, hey, I can, I can do this. All these guys, all these guys and gals, all the entrepreneurs I have the pleasure of getting to know over the last 21 years, a lot of them start with nothing. 80, I think 83, 86% of all multi-millionaires started from scratch. It started from nothing. And who knows? That could be you. You're watching this video right now. You have a burning desire to do something, do something big. And by the way, you don't need a lot of money, which by the way, is probably good advice. So if you're looking at this video right now, say, Matt, how do I get started? Please watch this video. How do I invest $5,000? If I had $5,000, a question that was asked me because people were getting their unemployment checks, people were getting their stimulus checks. They had like five grand just from the government through the stimulus plan and unemployment. What do I do with this $5,000? I think the answer would shock you. What I would say in this video, so I want you to check out this video, what I would do in this moment of $5,000. But you're out there right now, you're wondering, what do I do with my situation? What do I do with this pandemic and getting shut down and a lot of this uncertainty? Uh, all I know is about this, I trust the American spirit. I trust capitalism. I trust the fact that you and I can be from anywhere uh, with, with given nothing, like myself, that we don't need to depend on the government, that you don't need a hand out from anybody else to get you a hand up. I believe in that wholeheartedly. I started my business for less than 500 bucks after leaving eight years in the Marine Corps, and I didn't have a college degree. I didn't have sales. I didn't have a, ba a sales background. I didn't have an insurance background, but I learned the business. And if you want to learn the business, and you start educating yourself about the rules of the money game, you start educating yourself about sales and entrepreneurship and innovation and scale, teamwork, adapting my, what, you know, I, I adapted my skills from the military. Maybe you need to adapt your skills from whatever job or career background that you have. So therefore, you can apply it to business, you can apply it to entrepreneurship, and when you start flying and flapping those entrepreneurial wings, you'd be surprised at how high that you can go. Please, I'd love to know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section below. What's your feedback? And as you're thinking about this, who here in this video did you resonate with the most? Was it Warren Buffett? Was it uh, uh, Dorsey? Was it, uh, was it uh, Michael Porter? Whose advice did you resonate with the most? And what are you thinking that you're going to apply? With that being said, guys, if you haven't visited our new merchandise site for the Seven Figure Squad so you can wear some gear, hats, uh, shirts, pullovers, tank tops, backpacks, jackets, beanies, it's getting cold, you can buy it on the Seven Figure Squad merch site. And by the way, now until November 10th, we have a 10% discount off on the site. So plug in this code MSG10, MSG10 to sevenfigurescard.com and anything you buy, 10% off. With that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.